For car enthusiasts like you and I, a day like today is nearly impossible to top. Headed to the salvage auction with a couple bucks in your pocket, maybe you're looking for a project car too to buy. And of course, by new project cars, I do mean Corvettes. Some that are fixable, some that are, well, definitely not fixable. And then there's this one. This one might not be the star of the video, but due to personal bias reasons, it's the star of my heart, a wide body supersonic blue C6 Grand Sport. Some of you guys may beg to differ, but I think we're starting on a high point here. Dalt, what are you seeing under the hood? There's a lot of movement under there. Really the saving grace might be the fact that this is a steel frame car, so easier to fix than if it was a Z06 or a ZR1. Yeah, you might be right on that one. That's bashed in at least a foot. That front frame section there, which is not bolt on, it's welded. So that is a problem. I wasn't going to say it, but these cars have electronic door locks. If there's no battery power, you're pretty much stuck outside of the car. At this point, I'm less concerned about the front end and more concerned about those seat covers. What are those? Interior is clean, like clean. So I'm not gonna complain about the seat covers because I have to imagine the seats underneath are in fantastic shape. Yeah, but think about the poor animal that uh, sacrificed their life for this guy's Corvette. I mean, I'm sure those are, you know, real fur, right? Probably sheep or maybe lamb, if I had to guess. It is a Corvette, not a Porsche. He doesn't have Porsche money. It's not alpaca or another fine fur. Don't see if the hood pops. Oh no. This is wedged. That's the hood hinge right there. It's swayed over. When he got the door open, I was pretty hopeful and now it's not looking so good. You can see the latch right there. Unfortunately, the cable runs down this way all the way along the front of the car and then up to that. Somewhere up there, I think it got wedged, broken. I don't know, but it's not working. Come on, you got the beanie on. You look like a car thief. You can't even pop a hood. <laughs> I'm trying. Now, fortunately, this does look like a stock car, so it's not absolutely critical that we get under there. A stock LS is about as reliable as you get. So if we can see that there's no physical damage up here in the front, which very clearly Dalt's already trying to determine, I think we'll be good on this car. I can see the ground from here. Honestly, it doesn't even look like the radiator's broken. It's moved around a little bit, but it, it doesn't look like there's anything keeping us from starting this thing if it has power. Has battery power, engine isn't damaged, Well, they don't have the fuse out, so I'm not a fan of this guy already. If you guys heard that exhaust pop just a little bit and then get really quiet, that means you just don't have the correct fuse removed from this car, which is the first thing you should do on any C6. I won't get into them too bad about that exhaust because the engine, it's dead quiet. It sounds great. It might sound like it's running a little funny, but that's just because this intake up here, which of course houses the MAF sensor, is, uh, let's say, not in working order. Good, quiet engine, least intimidating C6 I've ever heard. I'm struggling to figure out if this is a positive or a negative. You wanna guess the mileage on this thing? 32,000 miles. You didn't give them time to guess. They were supposed to guess, and then you hit them with the knowledge. Maybe I'll like insert, you know, like the Jeopardy, like doo, 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 doo. Well, you just made the sound yourself. So, as you would expect on a car like this with that mileage, the interior is absolutely beautiful. Automatic, that's a little disappointing, but I suppose you take what you get when you're on the hunt for cheap Corvettes. I think this one is probably destined to be fixed, though, as much as I would love to see it because there are great quality parts on this thing. As much as I would also love to have this thing because you have the LS3 with only 32,000 miles, that's a $7,500 engine. You have a mint condition set of rear quarter panels, that conversion is 2,500 bucks. There's a ton of money in this car, but it's also one that's gonna be really valuable once it's fixed. Which, if you were fixing this car, it's not super straightforward, it's not super easy, but it's definitely doable. We'll start with the obvious stuff here. You're gonna need a fender, you're gonna need a headlight, you're definitely gonna need a hood. That's where it gets more complicated. You see that frame rail section down there. Because we can't pop this, you can't get a great look at it, but it's supposed to be about right there. It's more like that. Being that the impact's over here, this side definitely got it worse. It looks right here that it kind of just bent the front bar, which as you can see right there is welded on. You can replace that. You hack it there, weld a new one on. And one thing that's absolutely critical in this car that you heard him mention earlier, it's a steel frame car. If we had the same collision in a Z06, a ZR1 with the aluminum frame, we'd be in big trouble. 
I don't know that I'm gonna need to tell you guys this, but you're also gonna need a front bumper. All in all, this car ends up in a very weird spot. This Grand Sport, it's hit bad enough where I'm not sure that we can buy it. From the parts standpoint, I don't think we can get it cheap enough. Somebody's gonna pay premium money to fix this car. On the fixing front, I already have a better version of this car, so I don't need it. I do think ultimately somebody is gonna fix this and I kinda of hope it's one of you guys. If you see this video and decide to buy this car, definitely let us know how the rebuild process goes. And though this one isn't destined to end up back at the shop getting parted out, the next one we're gonna see, nobody's fixing that. I mean, nobody. You can't ever say a lie to you guys. That is horrific. This is absolutely nightmare fuel. That right there, that's pretty awesome. I do feel the need to excuse this. I don't know if you can hear it. We've been to a lot of salvage auctions. This is the first time we've ever been interrupted by drifting. The engine is 15 degrees tilted forward. This is a mess. This is, there's not many words for this. There's not a lot in this industry that really shocks me. This is a rough one. You guys know that we do the smoke series that has some of the worst wrecks of the best car, but this one is even extreme for that. Now, as big of a mess as this car is, there's very clearly massive drivetrain damage. All that aside, I am seeing a few positive things. I know it's gonna be hard on this car, but there are positives. Starting with the obvious, those silver ceramic coated LG Motorsports headers. They're big, they're shiny, they look fairly new. Over here, you have a Moroso engine oil catch can, something I actually didn't know existed here, a radium engineering oil fill cap. Look at that, an integrated filter. You can pull this fitting out. It looks like a dash 10, dash 12, and run a breather line out, boom, catch can. Which this car has a catch can, but they decided not to do that. You never know, maybe he was getting ready to throw a blower on this thing before this. To me, it looks like this car was probably more of like a road course kind of track car autocross the brakes just na power seems like it would probably fit the bill some of the parts that are on this car they scream road racing especially as he said these willwood bricks not only that but some of the brands the lg motorsports the k-tech spark plug wires while those parts don't necessarily scream road racer both of those brands are really big in the world of corvette road racing it does look like it has the oem titanium exhaust which is always a nice addition for the parts value for us specifically. Unfortunately, one side is damaged. We may be able to get into the interior over here on the drivers. Ever so slightly. I can't get in there, but I could squeeze you guys in. So you're gonna have to be my eyes on this one. I can make out some sort of aftermarket shifter there. Other than that, it's just, as you would expect, an absolute disaster. In tight quarters like this, it's fairly hard to make out, but the proportions on this car are just wild. The front end of the car, it's down. The center of the car, it's raised, and then the back end is just drooped to the ground. That last C6 we saw, that one was a little too nice to be a parts car. So you might be thinking, great, this is the perfect C5 Z06. Well, believe it or not, this one has its own set of issues. With this much damage, we have to worry about what in the drive line is actually gonna be usable the torque tube is obviously completely mangled but with these cars being connected with the motor and the transmission if the torque tube moves too much it can damage the block it can damage the actual front of the transmission the diff it moves everything around this is one that has to go very very cheap in order to make it really cost effective for us to get involved in. There is still value in this car. And being that it's a Z06, specifically a modded Z06, it actually has more value than you might think. Completely spitballing off the top of my head. I have to imagine those brakes are at least worth a grand. Even if the block somehow got trashed because of all that damage, the cylinder heads, they're worth a grand. Somehow, some way, it looks like this headlight assembly may have survived. These guys are $500 a piece. Point being that for all the issues this car has, even though it's a horrendous wreck, I wouldn't be completely surprised if you see this on the channel at some point. Here we go for everything that was wrong with that first C6. Automatic, not loud enough. This one cures all those issues. There it is. I mean, it might not be the perfect color, but the drivetrain, absolute A1. This is a Z06, the last one was a Grand Sport. That had the 6.2 liter LS3, seven liter LS7. It has an aftermarket intake manifold. Obviously it has a massive supercharger. I don't even know where to start on this thing. There's so much going on not only on the damage front, but the mod front. This is not your average blower setup. 
ECS 1500 SL. I'm not sure exactly how much power that's going to make. It does have a small belt on the back. It's not some crazy eight rib setup, but the engine, the engine is set up proper. If you look right there on the cylinder head, it says LS7. That's not factory. It might be an LS7, but from the factory, from Chevy, they definitely don't say LS7. So if you look a little harder on the back side of it, right there, you see PRC. It's an aftermarket set of cylinder heads. In fact, it's a big boy set of cylinder heads. If you look in between the headers right there, you see a couple extra bolt holes. That means those cylinder heads are set up for a six bolt block. And if you're not in the LS world and you don't know what that means, it means you're serious about making power, and I mean four digits. Unfortunately, this one is dead. We're not gonna be able to get inside of it to start it. But if I had to guess, Fernando probably has it spot on what this thing sounds like. Pretty much the only thing that I actively dislike about C6s are the fuel systems. They're a massive pain to deal with. The tanks, they're back there, they're under the car, they're a pain to get to. But from the factory, it's a returnless fuel system setup. That means there's not a second line running back there. And as you can see on this car, there is. That once again backs up the theory that this car is actually ready to make some power. But there is a lot of bad to go along with it it might not necessarily be bad for us but for anybody trying to fix this car it's not looking so hot this car has a lot of obvious damage but also a lot of sneaky more subtle damage that's going to end up to a costly repair if somebody tries to go that route the suspension obvious damage what is a little bit harder to see is the damage to the wheel and it's not just this wheel that's damaged the rear wheel is damaged also which means that there was some sort of impact in the rear end of this car and although it looks okay on the surface this entire wheel is shifted forwards which tells me that whatever they hit back here didn't do as much damage as the front but it did something the exhaust tips themselves got scraped that does lead me to believe that maybe something got under there it's also quite possible that the transmission or diff could have got hit you look at the gap on the hatch here it is extremely tight on that side very wide and also the hatch is raised the quarter panel to the hatch is not level whatsoever on this side these being aluminum frames that is pretty terrifying to see that there might be that much movement. It might just be in the fiberglass tub, but it could be deeper than that. Yeah, and speaking of the whole aluminum frame thing, that's where things get really ugly on this car. That Grand Sport frame we saw earlier, it was twisted over about the same. I did mention that the aluminum frame cars like this one don't hold up as well. And this is exactly what I meant. Instead of bending, this thing just sheared off and broke in half. Not only are aluminum chassis more fragile, but when they break like that, they're 10 times harder to fix. If you happen to rip a steel frame, it's not that uncommon for a shop to be able to fix that. But when you do this to an aluminum frame, there are very few places capable of fixing it. And when they can, a lot of money. Because of everything that we just mentioned, hopefully the fixers, the rebuilders won't be in bidding on this car and it'll just be left to us parts guys duking it out, which should limit the amount of bidders. But because we're basically both now, parts guys and a little bit of rebuilds, we're gonna be involved in this thing one way or another. I just hope it stays cheap. Am I optimistic that this car stays cheap? Uh, no. But as you guys know, I do tend to overpay for Corvettes, especially when they have a couple cool mods. But guys, as much as I love the C5s and the C6s that we've seen so far, I think it's about time that we kick it to something new. This is awesome. There you have it, the first C8 Z06 at a salvage auction. Trust me, I know what you guys are thinking. I can't believe they let us drive this C8 Z06 into the salvage auction either. We obviously have a lot of ground to cover today and a lot of Corvettes to see. So when we had the opportunity to rent this beautiful C8 Z06 to take around to all the lots, I obviously said, take my money. I mean it, I quite literally said, take my money. And then of course, I pulled said money out of this beautiful carbon fiber wallet from Ridge Wallet. And I know you think you know where this is going, and you'd be right. Today's video sponsor, 
Ridge Wallet. Ridge Wallet makes some of the most insane accessories in the game, including wallets out of Damascus, burnt titanium, and of course my personal favorite, carbon fiber. But you guys know the fun doesn't end there. On the back of every wallet, they have a ton of different accessories. Like this one, the cash strap. Of course, mine does not have any cash in it because I am now properly broke. Which brings us to my next favorite accessory, the Ridge key case. And it's absolutely perfect for when you run out of time on your rental car, have to give your fancy key fob back, and go back to driving your cars with keys that look like that. Every Ridge product comes with a lifetime warranty, so head on over to ridge.com slash scrap life to save 10% and ditch your bulky wallet forever. Yes, it sounds amazing. Yes, it's quick. And yes, we have already been pulled over in it. We'll talk about that in a little bit, but for now, we have a couple more wrecked cars to deal with. Don, I'm going to let you pick which one we going with, the C5 or the C7? Well, we haven't had a C7 in the video yet, and it's a Z06, so let's go there. I gotta say, this might be the second newest Z06 we're gonna see all day. But this was a little rough, it's all taped up. It has some pretty heavy damage. I can't see exactly what's going on under there, but it's definitely not good. From what I can see, the interior is more of the same. It's a little bit underwhelming, no competition seats. They do have this thing taped up pretty good, so we're gonna have to kind of infer what we can with the condition of the car as it sits. We can't go ripping it open, but one thing I can see here, this guy liked the party, and I like that. These tires are absolutely roasted. I mean, it feels like the last thing this guy did was a burnout. I suppose it's not out of the realm of possibility that he may have lost it during said burnout and ended up like this. A majority of the damage on this car is obviously right up here in the driver's front. There are some broken control arms. I see a lot of broken suspension. Otherwise, it's... Ooh, uh, wow. That's not good. More aluminum frame issues right there. That's not going to be fun to fix by any means, though I do suppose because this would be such a valuable car if it were in one piece, it's conceivable that somebody could fix it. The amount of damage all around this car is going to make it really difficult for me to think that this car could be fixed in an efficient manner. One thing that scares me a lot is this target top. It looks like it's either not latched or it is completely pushed back. I think that did the self delatching. That is entirely possible, but if it had enough force in this accident to push the entire windshield frame up, that is very, very scary. There is damage down low, both the door, the rocker, moving to the rear here. None of the gaps look like they are correct. It really looks like it twisted and shifted almost everywhere. This was a complex accident that caused damage all around this car. I suppose you could say, unlike the Z06 we brought, this one wasn't a fun ride. At least for its last ride. And then you get over to this side and the actual body damage is worse. This entire door looks like it's not even attached anymore. Nope, it is not. It indeed is not attached. As he just outlined, this car is pretty much just a wreck. While there's not one singular area that's absolutely catastrophic, it's a lot of bad areas spread all over the car that are just going to be a major pain to fix. Heavy damage, completely saran wrapped up. There's not a lot we can do with this one. I do know one car we can hop in and start though, and it's of course the trusty C5. We got the jump box, we even got the keys from the office. I know, it's a C5. There's a $250,000 car sitting right here. I like C5s. I do have to say, on the list of C5s that I like, this one is somewhere down there. Well, it's modded. There's a K&N intake. There do appear to be some small, cheaper brand aftermarket headers. Can't forget the white coil covers. That's very important. Otherwise, the engine bay looks disappointingly stock. The good news is, though, I did peep something back here on the rear end. I think we all know you're hard pressed to find a better set of mufflers for any Corvette, regardless of age, than courses. At this point, I do feel like I've hyped up this C5 just a little too much, but we're gonna start it. Maybe it sounds great, maybe it redeems itself. <laughs> As is the case with some other C5s I've had in the past, it's time running wasn't the longest, but it did sound awesome. But now I'm about to pose the question of the day. What sounded better, this? Or this? All 
I'll say here is you don't need to look up how to make a C5 rev. You just hit the gas. This is dumb. We're finishing our day here at IAA in Long Island, New York. It's massive. It's made up of seven different lots. That means we get to use this C8Z06 as our little lot hopper. And of course, what we're after right now is that other blue C8 right there. Put her in off-road mode. Yeah, that'll do. She's good. Take her back. Little more. Little more. Little more. Yeah, that's good. That'll do. Now, I know this one here might not be a Z06, but it's a close second and it doesn't cost a quarter million dollars. Uh, would you call this minor work, Dalt, or what are we working with here? That's not the word that I would use to describe it. This is seemingly major work and that's why it's here. But that's also why we might be able to afford it. Before we dive into the damage, the color. I love this color. Rapid blue Sebring orange, I believe that is. Now, as a somewhat new C8 enthusiast, and by somewhat new, I do mean within the past three hours, I'm starting to like these cars, and I'm going to look on the bright side. It's not as bad as the Demon. Being that we've never done a C8, we don't necessarily know all the intricacies of them, but one difference that stands out between the Z06 and this Stingray is the roof. This is the retractable hardtop version, which appears to be completely undamaged but there are several other body panels on this car that are damaged that we need to take note of. The further forward you get, the worse it gets, but this is definitely looking like a lot of panel replacement back here, driver quarter panel broken through pretty good in a very, very large area. These, I believe they call the side blades, if I'm not mistaken. It's not an R8, it's a Corvette, but we'll go with it. I think that's still what they're called, but obviously we are looking at replacement there. The door down here looks like it could probably be saved. Easy. But the lower rocker is pretty banged up in multiple locations. I gotta say, that's probably an easy fix though. None of that, it's not missing anything. I feel like that's simple. Again, I'm taking positive here. If you really wanted to, you could probably even fix that though. I do have to agree with thought. Replacing is probably the easier option. We're gonna brush past this obviously moved around wheel, which means suspension damage, to continue with the body here at the back, because again, there is a lot of damage on the back end of this car. We're gonna switch it up here. I'm gonna take the rear end. The bumper, trashed. The mufflers, maybe just the exhaust tips are missing. It probably sounds awesome. Now the rear tub, if you would kindly come over here. That's dinged up pretty good. You see it's separated there. Now I did just fix a rear tub on a C6. I mean, how much more complicated could a C8 be? Now, if you look closely over here, you can see we do have a flat tire. So you're gonna need to do that. You may be able to save this wheel though. It's gouged pretty heavily, just like the other side. The quarter panel, that's damaged. The uh, side blade, that is damaged though. Definitely fixable. Same deal with the rocker. The damage on this car is pretty identical side to side. It's very symmetrical. We'll, we'll phrase it like that. Again, positive. Speaking of symmetrical, the front ends. It is symmetrical. It just happens to be about 15 degrees this way. Good news, the engine, it's in the rear. So this front damage couldn't have hurt that. Bad news, even if there's not a motor or transmission, anything like that to damage up here, the frame. I think we're gonna have some pretty big issues. Whenever a car is kind of folded like that, it's never a good sign. And unfortunately folded, this one is. It's pretty nasty. I don't know how I feel about the feasibility of actually fixing this one. As positive as I want to be on this car, I do probably view it as more of a parts car, especially now that this isn't the newest, hottest thing because, well, we're driving the newest, hottest thing. This one doesn't have the same allure. It doesn't have the same value on the fixer market. So I could very easily see this going to a salvage yard like us. Now, unfortunately, because these are super high tech, new fancy cars, unlike my beloved C6, we can't get into it. It doesn't have any battery power. We don't have access to put battery power to it because we're way over here in some side lot. We don't have a jump box anymore. But if you look through the windshield, I know what you're about to say, Dalt. I saw it too. 
blue interior. It's absolutely awesome. We're gonna look past the blown bags and go straight to the seats. They are the competition version with the two-tone blue. Absolutely beautiful. And in case you can't see in there like we can because it doesn't show up very well on camera, here's a picture. Now don't worry guys, if you thought we were going to tease you with this beautiful C8 Z06 and then show you one lone crash C8 at the end of the video, that's not how we operate. We're not done yet, we got one more of these to see. You know, I did get hyped up. We're driving down the street. We come to this one last side lot. It's a C8, a beautiful red C8, and I might add, just tucked in this dark little garage. I thought it was gonna be a good one. It wasn't a flood car, I knew that much. It looks complete. Why can't we hop in and start it, right? Don't ask me how a stock one of these managed to do this, but it caught on fire. Not a fire fire like the Demon, but a fire nonetheless. We aren't gonna be able to see the extent of the damage underneath, but you can see how much heat came out of the engine bay on this car, enough to melt the paint on the rear hatch there. Aside from that, moving to the back end of the car here, it really doesn't look too, too bad. Although you can see some soot damage that maybe came out of that vent there. It looks like this thing was really you know not a minor fire now that doesn't mean that there isn't a minor amount of damage under there but it also could be very very significant now moving around towards the front end of the car where you get away from the area that has potential fire damage the rest of the car looks pretty darn good and these again are those competition seats moving to the front end of the car here it actually looks really really good as you would expect since the fire is at the back end of the car the front end here looks pretty well untouched now unfortunately stuff like this is a trend with the newer cars when they have fire damage when they have flood damage you simply can't get into them unfortunately these last couple of c8s were spoiled by that pesky new technology one thing that certainly has not been a letdown in the technology department today this thing here we have about an hour ride back across new york before we have to turn this thing in i'd love to invite you guys along for the ride what an absolute blast this car is now here's the question $250,000, which seems to be about the going rate for this. Is this what you're buying? No. I agree. It, it's not. I love it. It's my first time driving one, but it's not what I'm buying. At that point, I am getting something turbo for sure. And probably something that has a little shield that says, what is it, Stuttgart on the front? It has a mile. Keep in mind, this is not the proper, I guess, usage of this car. You really need to be on a track in this thing. Just like say a GT3. Now a 992 Turbo you could bring out here, it would be just mind-numbingly fast. It would be about the same price and that would be a blast. But for these high revving NA cars that don't make impressive horsepower numbers, they're meant to be used in a different way and it's not sitting in New York traffic. as is the case every time I drive an awesome car that I don't own. I don't wanna leave it, but I guess it's time to do so. When one of these actually shows up at salvage auction, I suppose that may have been an important distinction to make in the beginning of the video, but hey, we're working on it. We, uh, we might have to make a run at actually buying one of these things. If you could get one at MSRP, I can't imagine a better car. But for now, we all know that's not the case, so I can't do much with one, I can't afford it. But as is my life's motto, when I can find one salvaged, wrecked, or otherwise cheap, you know I'm probably gonna try to buy it. We might not be able to take this one home, but we did see some cars at auction today that have a good chance at winding up at the shop at some point. And in the meantime, at least I have the juke to hold me over. Just had to bring the juke into it. Either way, hopefully we get a couple deals on some of the cars we saw today, and I'll see you back very soon. This was kind of to be expected, I guess. Somewhat, right? How you doing? Hey. How are you? How's it going? I'm off some of the Nassau County Police Highway Patrol. I have to let you know this is being recorded. Sure. Yeah. The reason why I stopped you is you jumped out of the uh, HOV lane. We have like another 30 miles on this to our destination. Okay. I was just going to hop off and find a restroom. Okay. 
All right, can I see your license registration yeah. insurance? It's a rental, so I don't know how the insurance works exactly. Okay. Where are you going to with the car? Uh, uh, in a salvage auction in Long Island. Where? A salvage auction in Long oh, Island. A salvage yep. auction. With this? Oh, well, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> we're not. We're not. Yeah, it doesn't belong <laughs> there, but we figured yeah, we'd yeah. use the opportunity while we're up here. All right. Well, just sit tight.